welcome to 151 Garage. I'm Jill. Sean's behind the camera. I'm Sean. <laughs> and today, we're going to talk about the keyless keypad. The reason why we're discussing this is because we built this the, about a year after we built that one. That also has the keypad as well. As you know, this was sitting on Ice Mountain for quite a while, waiting for a chip. We finally got it and didn't quite think, you know, to test out the keypad when we picked it up. I never had on any of the vehicles that we ever bought. And same thing for this one, I didn't think about it. And one day I was trying to program it because I did that one within three minutes. I could not get this one to work. I went through for like one hour trying to get it to work. I had my husband on it. I was calling Ford to help me with it and walk through all the steps. We even did the two key thing to where you can try and recover it from the computer. Nothing was working. So let me stop you right there. The two key things she's talking about is there is a spot in the center console of this. Don't worry about opening it because you're not sure? going to be able to see it. Okay. Um, there's a center spot in this where you put the keys in. It's underneath the little mat that's covering up the bottom. You put a key in there. You you don't put the foot on the yeah, brake. Yeah, you don't touch the brake Yeah, you at just all. Press, the, press the start with no feet on anything. Let it ding about three, four times. No stop keys. it, turn the other key on, or put the other key in the same spot, do the same thing, and it should pop up with a code. On this one, it doesn't do it, nor on that one. Most Fords do, these don't. I don't know if there's another thing this they Ford have to do will. for this one. Yeah, that it will. Uh, but these, it doesn't do that to. Now, what she's talking about, we didn't have problems like we didn't know how to do it because she just did that one. But when she came to this one, it wasn't working. Yeah, so, I mean, it literally took three minutes to program that one. And I did the exact same thing I did on that one, on this one. No matter what I did, it did not work. So we ended up going to service at Ford and they had it for a couple of days and the guy was really great. We, uh, we tossed around different scenarios, what could have happened, because this one and another Bronco came in. So we first thought the coach got switched. And then, uh, then we thought, well, maybe it just came with the wrong code. And then we thought, well, maybe the keypad was just, you know, inoperable, which that wasn't correct either because you can push these two numbers and all four doors would lock. You just can't put a code in and have them open. Yeah, so we knew this was yeah. actually connected because I was actually testing it and I could press these two buttons and it would lock it itself. Now, what she's talking about the code is, let me go in here. When you go to right here, there's usually a card that sits over the top of this. It sits usually like right around here. In hers, it was in there. Mine was actually in the book, it was yeah. actually in the glove compartment taped to the book. So it was not in its original location. Now that's what it was sent was by Ford to the dealership. The problem was Ford put the wrong code into the computer. I think Ford since this was on Ice Mountain, they had all sorts of other Broncos. They, pr I bet you they put the wrong book with the tape to the code in the wrong Bronco. Probably. So, so if somebody's out there trying to get a keypad Guess fixed, what? We have your <laughs> we code. We probably have your code. Yeah, we probably have your code. And you probably have ours. Yep. So. <laughs> so that is what happened. They actually had to put the correct code in. And the reason why... So they put the correct code in and... We did have the VIN number for the other one that came in because of the way that we tracked the vehicle. Um, that was on the same shipment as this one. We ran that one with Ford and at the dealership to see if that was the code for it, and it wasn't. It's just simple that on Ice Mountain, they somehow got the codes mixed up and it got programmed wrong. And I think it's just, like I said, I think it's just a card they threw in there because I think this yeah. was programmed. They just didn't have the books in there at the time. Right. Yeah. They could have had the books all switched. Yeah. Because and the like I said, when I looked at that one to find the code, the card that is 
tape to the glove box or glove uh, the paperwork is actually the same size and the same card that was underneath the dash for this one and it was located right under there on top of the fuse box so yeah. that's why i think they uh they did it on this one right here the big black truck my f-350 it's actually a sticker that's on that part it's actually on the uh on the box itself so oh. We're not mad or anything. I just thought it was interesting that we're having such a problem with the keypad and it was something so minor. Yeah. <laughs> so so if let any, me know if you guys had an issue with that in the comments. Leave a comment down below if you've had an issue like that, especially with the codes. Uh, see if anybody else has any kind of issues with the keypads not working or the wrong codes installed. Yeah. So we just thought it was interesting. I mean, humans make mistakes. It's, it's yeah. going to happen. Yep. So especially when you have a a lot of these vehicles sitting in a lot side by side it's easy to get them confused but anyway hope you enjoyed the video and thank you for watching and don't forget we have a 3,000 subscriber giveaway and the uh, buckyourbronco.com we have a 10 percent off discount code at 151 mm -hmm. and i will put that down below and it will be the first comment pinned okay we'll see you on the next one bye